this. Okay, uh, so, Puching, you can go ahead. Okay. Nice morning to all of you on behalf of FCT. I would like to welcome all of you to join us this Sunday service this morning. And now I would like to invite Sister Margaret to do scripture reading. Um, the scripture uh, is taken from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Sister Margaret? Uh, Sister Margaret, please unmute yourself. Okay. Philippians 4, 6 to 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Margaret. And shall we uh, bow our heads and have our opening prayer? Hallelujah. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you and praise you. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. And we would like to bring our thanksgiving before your throne of grace. Thank you, Father God, for your provision, for protection, for your healing, for your wisdom, and your favor that is upon us. I want to thank you. And Father God, you are a good God. And even right now, us. Please open our hearts to come before your grace, your throne of grace, to worship you and to minister to you. And also let our heart be softened to your teaching, to your words. We thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, please come. We, commit, we surrender the whole service into your hand. Holy Spirit, please have your way. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. And now, worship. Uh, I would like to pass this time to Sister Sophia to lead us into worship. Sister Sophia. Thank you. Uh, let us come together to worship and praise God this morning.
Okay, one ready. Oh, shit, it's 
presence be known to us although we are all virtually worshiping together i just pray a lot as we listen to the sermon later that you will continue to speak to our hearts and continue to help us um, grow together and learn together in jesus name i pray amen thank you sister sophia again reminding us the goodness of god and the greatness and the awesomeness of God. Hallelujah. Okay, now is announcement time. Uh, this coming Tuesday, 29 June, uh, we will not be having SOD, but we'll be having prayer portal online. I would like to uh, encourage all of you, if you can join, come join us. Join us, do join us so that we can come together to pray and intercede for the nation. Now, the, uh, the time of the prayer portal is 8.30 to 9.45. It's a Zoom meeting, and the Zoom ID is 860-4470-2043, and passcode is prayer. We also have prayer altar online. Uh, on every Wednesday and Friday morning. The time is 10.30 a.m. at 11.45. Again, if you can join us, do come. You're all welcome. Uh, it's also a Zoom meeting. The Zoom ID is 899-6434-3880. Passcode is PA008. And now we come to Tyson offering. In Malachi 3.10 says that, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. There may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord God Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. And if you are giving online, you can uh, truck, give, <clears throat> bank into our FCT account with Maybank, FCT per heart, account number 5122-3151-3600. And if you are doing transfer, uh, please let Sister Margaret know that you have, you, uh, you have done it. So, and... Uh, Okay, the next one. And now um, I would like to call upon uh, Elder Kelvin to pray over the tax and offering. Elder Kelvin? Let us pray. Okay, yes. Let us pray. Our, Holy, our God and Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things. And indeed, your word makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and make use them to your glory. May these gifts bring shelter to the homeless, comfort to the sick, rest to the weary, and hope to the hopeless. Just as you multiply the offering of the fish and the loaves that were freely given for others, we pray that you would multiply these our offerings to you and accomplish with them more than we could ask or imagine. We give freely 
and not from compulsion, for there's nothing we could give that matches your glory and majesty, and the great gifts of your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, which guides us daily. All we have is yours, Father, in heaven, and we ask that you would use us and all we have as you will. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. And now we come to this special item. That is to pray for the June's birthday girl and birthday boy. Now I would like to call uh, Pastor Joshua to do a, 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 a blessing pray over them. Pastor Joshua, please. Okay, uh, for those of you at home, the family members, may you stretch your hands towards them or lay your hand upon them. Whoever are born in the month of June, we want to pray a special blessing over you. Father, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, for those who are born in the month of June, we are grateful and we are thankful for them. Lord, we ask God for your presence to be with them. We ask for your blessing will come upon their lives, whether in, in good health and your favor and your grace be upon them in the name of Jesus. We continue to ask for your divine protection upon them. Father, we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus that they may continue to grow deeper in, in, in you, Lord, and drawing closer to you and knowing you as the Father to them, Lord. Father, we want to thank you. We bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, the next, next Sunday. Yes, we will be having a Zoom service for next Sunday. And next Sunday, 4th of July, is the first Sunday of the month. So we'll be having Holy Communion. Uh, like, please, I would like to invite you to prepare the bread and cup so that we can take, uh, can take Holy Communion together. And our Zoom meeting ID is 842 uh, 3142287 has called FCT service. And we'll be also having live stream on Facebook. And the next Sunday speaker is uh, Elder, uh, Tan, Elder Tan Weeping. And the topic he's going to share is the way of the Nicolaitans. Okay. All right. Um, now it is time for us to hear the word of God. And today, speaker is Pastor Joshua. Topic is unshakable peace. Pastor Joshua, back to you. Okay. Thank you, Sister Preaching. <clears throat> uh, once again, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, this morning to Zoom service, and uh, we 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 ask that the Lord will continue to bless us during this time. And looking at the situation, uh, we probably will lock down a little bit more further uh, over the situation in Malaysia. And uh, so this morning, I I like to entitle my message, uh, "Unshakable Peace." Is it possible for us to experience the, this unshakable peace in a world full of trouble and chaos and in this pandemic? The answer is obviously yes. Now, we need to understand the background of this uh, Philippians chapter 4. Let me just read this word. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests, requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding and will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, when Paul was writing this uh, letter or they call the epistle, he was in prison in Rome somewhere around AD 61 and 62. And he was writing this letter to the church that he founded uh, in Philippi during his uh, second missionary journey when he received a Macedonian call in a, in a vision of the night, we call it a dream. They, call it, they saw a man 
you know, uh, calling him to come over to Macedonia. So that is where he uh, journeyed to Macedonia, and that is where he started preaching the gospel, and uh, the church in Philippi was founded by him. So he was writing this book at this moment and uh, in, uh, in the prison in Rome, we are waiting for his trial. So he was talking about many things. One of the things thing that he mentioned about how to live as a Christian with this joy that he has. Then in Philippians chapter 4, he was talking about a peace that we can have uh, in spite of circumstances that we are facing in life in this challenging world that we can still receive this peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Now, let's look at some of the, uh, the Bible uh, about mentioning about three kinds of peace in the, in the Bible. First, it's, we call it the world peace. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said to the disciple, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So here, Jesus mentioned to his disciples that the peace that I give to you are very different from the world that gives to us. So he referring to this uh, world peace uh, as we define as in the, new, in the dictionary, it says that peace defined as freedom from disturbance, tranquility, a state of period in which there is no war or war has ended, the state of being free from dissension. Now, that is the kind of peace we are talking about from the world. But Jesus said, I will give you a peace that is very different from the peace I can give to you. Then we find from the Bible, it mentioned about another peace in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is this peace with God? Now, this peace with God is about our relationship with the Father God. Because of sin, we have been separated from the presence of God. And uh, so there is a hostility, there is a stray relationship with the Father God because we are a sinner. So this peace with God comes as a result of putting our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And now we are being reconciled back to God and, uh, and God become our father and we become his children. And so there's no more hostility between Father God and us because of Jesus Christ, what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary and that we have this peace with God. So when anyone who put their faith in Jesus and we are being reconciled back to God. And the third kind of peace mentioned in the Bible is called the peace of God. Uh, which found in Philippians 4, verse 7, just now we read uh, earlier, that is the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Now, what is this peace of God? Now, this peace of God is a peace deep within. It is a tranquility of mind, quietness of the soul, that sense of confidence, that sense of assurance that we have, that stillness, no matter what is going on around us, somehow in the inside, everything is quiet, still, and secure. Now, this peace of God is not depend on circumstances. No matter, what's, no, no matter what circumstances we may be facing or going through in life, that when this peace of God comes into your heart, you, you are able to experience that peace, quietness of the soul inside your heart, even though the situation may be bad that you are facing, but there is a tremendous peace that overwhelms and fills your hearts and your mind at that time and the moment. Now, in John 14, verse 27, we read just now earlier, we talk about Jesus talk to the disciple. He says that peace, I live with you. Now, this is the peace that God wants to give to us. Uh, not just when we have become a children, we have this peace with God, that God has become our father. But there is a peace of God that can, God can, come, uh, can give to us to give us so that we can face all kinds of challenges in life. Now, the Bible says that in the world we have tri uh, tribulation, but be of good cheer. I overcome the world. 
And as we know that we face all kinds of challenges, uh, we cannot live without uh, facing any troubles and trials in life. Uh, so, but in the Bible, there are many scriptures that God has promised us that he can give us this peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that fill our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Now, this peace Jesus offered to his disciples is very different. It is a peace that Jesus modeled every day of his life. Jesus' peace did not flee from conflict, free from pain or death. In fact, the more intense the difficulties that Jesus faced, the more apparent Jesus' peace became. Jesus derived his peace from his father. So this is the peace that we are talking about today that we must, uh, must have so that we are able to uh, face the circumstances we are facing. In fact, at this moment, we really need the peace of God in, in our hearts at this time as we're facing tremendous uh, challenges in life, uh, especially in Malaysia, as we are facing this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. We are still not out of the woods. The cases are still high. And uh, lockdown probably may be extended a little bit more longer. I first experienced this peace of God during my first missionary uh, mission trip to Chennai in India, somewhere around January 1990. I, I still recall back and uh, when I say yes to go uh, to Chennai, uh, to India, uh, to, uh, together with my wife, and uh, there was very, uh, there was troubles in my mind. My mind is full of trouble and, uh, uh, and still thinking whether I should go or not go. But deep inside my heart, there is a tremendous peace that what Apostle Paul mentioned, that stillness, that quietness in my heart. I just knew that God uh, gave me this peace as they wanted me to go in faith, knowing that. He will be with me, even though my mind was very troubled, you know, and filled with uncertainty and uh, whether I'm thinking whether I'm able to cope, whether I'm able to face the challenges, the condition in this place that we are living, they are living in. And uh, but thank God, because of that peace, and I go in faith. Yes, it was a difficult journey. It was a very trying period and a difficult mission trip. You know, the condition was tough. And uh, the food was uh, not easy to eat. Even in the, the hotel that you stay, uh, is minus five, five star. Okay, not five star hotel, okay? But it's minus five star. And uh, so it's, uh, the living condition is very bad. But surprisingly, throughout the entire 14 days journey, I just felt that peace and the presence of God that's filled my heart and my mind. And that was the first encounter that I had in this peace. Of God. Now, there was this person by the name of Horatius Gate and Anna Spedford. I think some of you may heard about his story. And I, I want to share with you today because it's very appropriate uh, about the peace of God that he experienced. Uh, he, was, he is famous for his uh, Christian hymn that he wrote, It Is Well With My Soul. <clears throat> Now, Horace, <coughs> Horace Spedford was an American lawyer, a Presbyterian church elder. Uh, and uh, he was, uh, at, at the time, in 1871, he invested heavily uh, in the investment in Chicago. And there was a great fire uh, in Chicago. And uh, many of his investments reduced to ashes. And so he had lost many uh, investments. During the time, and two years after that, uh, of the devastation of the Great Chicago Fire, and he planned a family trip to Europe, to uh, to to England, to meet up his friend Dia Moody was his friend, and while he was preaching there, and uh, so because of some business demand, he stood, uh, he stayed back for a while, and uh, the wife journey first together with the four daughters. Uh, four daughters, these are the four daughters that, that went along with uh, the wife, Anna. 
So on November 22nd, 1873, and uh, while the ship was uh, sailing on the Atlantic Ocean, and they struck an iron uh, sailing vessel, killing 226 people, including all four of Spedford's daughter. Age 12, Maggie Annie, Maggie 7, Bessie 4, and an 18-month-old baby. His wife, Anna, the only survivor. So when she uh, survived the, the tragedy, she, she sent a telegram to uh, Horatius Spafford, her husband, and safe alone. And later, Spafford sailed to England to join the wife. And uh, he passed by this uh, place, this ocean where uh, four of his daughters were drowned in this place. And later part mentioned that in his own home in Chicago, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to commemorate of the death of his children, of the four children, he wrote this hymn called It Is Well With My Soul. Now, this is the hymn that he wrote many, many years ago. And, uh, and he found Tremendous peace that's filled his heart. One of the stanza, the first stanza says this. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, <clears throat> whatever my Lord thou has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And I believe that truly that the loss of the four daughters of his and uh, that's this peace that surpasses all understanding and fill his heart and his mind at the time and the moment. Well, we want to thank God that after a few years later that the wife gave birth to three more children to, to him and two daughters and one son. Uh, this is the son, Horatius Grudner. And uh, a tragedy struck again. At the age of, uh, some say he's three, some say he's five years old, and uh, he developed a scarlet fever, and uh, his young child died. So th this is a tragic that uh, Horatius and Anna Spafford has gone through in, in their journey of life. But we thank God that it was the peace of God that surpassed our understanding and filled the hearts and the mind at the time at that moment. So we too can have this peace of God, whatever challenges we may be facing at this time, at this moment. But God promises that he can give us this peace that surpasses all understanding. That will fill our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Now, how can we, or how we can have this peace of God? <clears throat> Philippians 4 verse 6 says this, don't be anxious about anything. The first key is, don't be anxious. Now, what does the word anxious? Anxious mean another word means worry. Don't worry. But a human being, as you know, that we are uh, people who are worried much. And, uh, and, and we used to worry many things. And uh, the, the, the word worry, interesting, in the original Old English root form, which we get our word worry means to strangle. Now, if you ever worry, you know how it does it strangle a person. It has physical consequences, headache, neck pain, ulcers, worries, affects our thinking, our digestion. So when we over worry and it will cause us uh, all kinds of uh, pain, headache, and even sometimes sicknesses will develop. And Dr. Walter reported a survey on, uh, on worry. He says that, only 8% of the things people worry were legitimate methods of concern. The other 92% were either imaginary, never happened, or involved matters over which the people had no control over with. Now, anxiety or worry is the biggest hindrance in receiving the peace of God. Now, this is the question we used to ask. What if? What if? What if? And uh, I, I, I remember 
when uh, when the first time the rollout of the AstraZeneca vaccine, you know, for, for voluntary. And uh, I too was worried because of the information they received. Oh, there may be blood clot, you know, the possible blood clot and all these things. So I still remember Jenna was asking me, hey, Dad, there are only 50,000 50, left, you know. And uh, do you have a sign? I say, uh, we think, ding, 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 ding. And, uh, and after that, three and a half hours later, all of the taken up. <laughs> that is because we are worried. We worry, what if I take it and I am the, I'm the person who will get the blood clot? You know, we worry so much. And uh, do you know that by until today, you know, we know the cases in our country, you know, there's about 70 to 80 people die every day. But we do not hear of people taking vaccine or AstraZeneca or dying one person at a day. So you imagine, so this is an unnecessary kind of worry that, that fills our, our mind because of the reports. Yes, there is such cases, but it's only about 0.002% according to WHO. So it's a very uh, small number percentage. So, uh, so, so worry can cause us to, you know, for opportunity and uh, to take the vaccine early. We thank God that the second time, our volunteer and all of us begin to sign up quickly, you know, for those who are 60 and uh, above, quickly sign up. And uh, it was a wise choice because why? Because the situation uh, in our country, we need to be vaccinated fast and to protect ourselves. So this is one area that we see how worry can stop us from moving forward and it causes unnecessary concern uh, that fill our hearts and our mind. I just read an article yesterday, a, a, a news report in India. Uh, it's very tragic. Uh, it's a family of four. And uh, because they heard their friends, their relative, you know, would die of COVID-19 uh, virus. And uh, they were so worried. And uh, so worried until they, they, they begin to take their own life. No. <laughs> you know that? They will not die of COVID-19 virus. They were worried that they were infected by a COVID-19 virus and die. But instead of facing the challenges they have faced, uh, and uh, they may not get it, you know, they may not get it. Or they may get it or may not die. But they were so worried until the, the worry that overpowers them and uh, fill their mind with such negative uh, uh, anxiety and it causes them to take their own life. Four of them, the whole family died and they poisoned. What if? This can happen to us if we allow anxiety to fill our hearts and mind. So secondly, what we need to do is that the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7 is that we need to stay focused on God, not stay focused on the problem. Stay focused on God. How? In Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Everything means everything. Amen? Say, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So the first and foremost, that instead of worry and anxiety and anxious about anything, Apostle Paul encouraged the believers is say we need to stay focused on God. So in everything, in every situation in our life whatsoever, say come to God, bring, bring it before God in prayer and bring your request, your supplication before the Almighty God and, uh, and with thanksgiving. And then they say that the peace of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Now, there was a, a person, an Old Testament saint, uh, encountered this situation in his life. Let's look at Daniel. In Daniel chapter 6, we realize that, you know, there were uh, high-ranking officials, you know, they were zealous about Daniel's position. And so they plot. To remove him, so they they told the king Darius to, to come up with a decree, and uh, you know those who worship uh, any other god or uh, beside or any other man beside the king Darius uh, for 40, uh, thirty days will be thrown in the lion's den. 
So the king Darius signed the decree. And uh, so when Daniel heard about this decree that was signed by the king, you know what he did? He says he went home to his upstairs rooms where the windows was open toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knee and do what? Exactly what Paul mentioned in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. He said he prayed and giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So Daniel brought this issue before the Almighty God. He bring it before God and, 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 and ask God. You know, we don't know exactly what he prayed, but I do believe that he prayed. You know, concerning these issues, you know, this decree that was signed by the king. And he bring it before God. And what happened? They found out that he was still praying to his God. And so he was put into the lion's den. And, but thank God, miraculous thing happened. God divinely protected Daniel from the lion's den by eaten by the lions. He was delivered from his situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at third things. And after uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, and, uh, and uh, verse 8 and 9, Paul says this word. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things the things which you learn and received and heard and saw in me this do the god of peace will be with you so what is this what are the things that are noble what are the things that are just what are the things that are pure what are the things that are lovely what are the things that are good report i believe the word of god so in this category. Amen. And it is the word of God that is pure. The word of God is has good report. It is the word of God has noble and uh, is worthy. And so we need to meditate, meditate on the word of God, especially on peace. There are countless of scriptures in the Bible that talk about peace. So if we lack of peace, meditate on the word of God. Look, search, go to Google and find out, you know, all the peace scriptures in the Bible and begin to meditate on this scripture. As you know, the word meditate means ponder or confession or utter, you know, speak the word of God over your life. You know, let, let the peace of God, the scriptures on peace, they begin to fill our hearts and our mind, you know. And, and somebody used to say, you know, but for us to receive the word, from here, the information, the word from our mind into our heart uh, is, is further than from here to going to the United States. And so we need to allow the word of God to sink deep into our heart. And as we meditate the scriptures, the Bible says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you what? Peace. This is a benediction that you used to hear, you know, uh, speakers at the end of the service, they will quote this scripture and say, the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face with you and give you what? Peace. God will give us peace. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 and 16 says this, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called into one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalm and hymn and spiritual song with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Don't let COVID rule in your mind. Don't let negative news, you know, uh, the, the numbers fill our hearts but let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts and our mind. Amen. So that the peace of God will fill our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. And then he says this, the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus in Philippians 4 verse 7. So what 
the, the peace of God has the power to guard now our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. Now, this word guard is a military term that means to surround and protect a garrison or a city. Okay, so it will protect. Now, he says that this peace of God will protect what? Protect your heart and your mind. Now, the heart sometimes used as emotion, and the mind uh, sometimes are referred to thought. So, so the peace of God will guard us and protect us from what? From wrong emotion. Emotion of uh, being depressed, feeling the sadness, oh, grief. And it says that we will protect our mind from what? From wrong thought. Just like the, the family of four, uh, they do have the peace of God in their hearts and they like allow the COVID-19 uh, virus, the negative news of, of the, the love, uh, the relative and the loved one and fill their mind. So until they are so troubled and uh, causes them to do something that is foolish. But the peace of God is able to protect our emotion. It's able to protect our mind, our thought, so that we have a sound mind, so that we are able to see the situation in a proper perspective. Amen? A proper perspective. Hallelujah. So we need to do how we can have this peace of God is three things. Number one, do not be anxious. Say with me, do not be anxious. And secondly, what do I do? Stay focused on God. Amen? Bring it before God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let your request be made known unto God. And thirdly, is to meditate on the scriptures on peace. So let the peace of God will fill your hearts and our mind. Now, this peace comes from God. Amen? It's a supernatural peace. You cannot get anywhere. Okay? You can only get from God. Now, if you are not a Christian, then you first, you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So you have the peace with God first. And then we can ask God for this peace to come in our hearts. And I want to close with this story, an incident of Jesus in the boat in Mark chapter 4, verse 34. Now, as you know, this story in uh, the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus was in the boat. It was, he was sleeping. And uh, the, the disciple, and then there were, with the disciple, and there were great wind storm that rose during the time the waves were breaking into the boat, and uh, and, uh, and 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 then the disciple was very worried, so he woke up the the, the master, Rabbi, Rabbi, and, you know we are we are sinking, you know, and uh, so Jesus woke up and it's and he rebuked the wind, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Do you know that we are just like the disciples? Uh, we are in the boat. And when this storm comes in our life, sometimes we are facing many challenges in our life. And, and uh, we... We think that Jesus is asleep. Don't know where Jesus, 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 where are you? But Jesus is with us. Amen. The Holy Spirit is with us. And do you know that Jesus can speak to the storm and say, peace be still, and it will, it will come. And I believe that God is challenging us. Whatever challenges that you are going through at this time, at this moment, even our nation that we are going through, remember Jesus is with us in the boat. He can just speak to the storm. Peace be still. And it will still. Amen. So let us be encouraged by the word of God. That whatever challenges that we are facing, whatever circumstances we are facing, remember that Jesus is in the boat with us. Hallelujah. Amen. So how we can have peace of God? Don't be anxious. Stay focused on God. Meditate on scriptures on peace. And I want to close with this song. Uh, it's a very famous song as uh, written by the Horatius Stafford. Uh, it is well with our soul. So I want to uh, just to close with this song, uh, this hymn. And as, as, as I play this music, this, uh, 
his YouTube uh, Christian hymn. Let the word fill our hearts. Let it minister to us. Amen. You can sing along where you are in your home. Yeah. When peace like a Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this morning, for your word to us. That, Lord, that we can have this unshakable peace, that peace of God that comes from you and you alone. Father, we may face challenges. We may face circumstances that is difficult and challenging. 
But Lord, we know that God, that we can call upon your name, the God of peace will fill our hearts, Lord. With this supernatural peace that will guard our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus, Lord. Father, we just want to pray for everyone who is going through difficulties in life, even at this challenging time they are facing. I pray that God, let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, our Lord, will guard our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus, even at this time and this moment. Lord. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to pray for every one of us, Lord. Lord, we are listening from the Zoom and the Facebook. Lord, yes, Lord, we are facing this challenging time that we're facing in our country. But Lord, I pray that the peace of God, Lord, that will surpass us all understanding, will guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus, Lord. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you in Jesus' mighty name. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. And those who are watching from uh, Facebook, we thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again next Sunday. And God bless you. And for those of you from the Zoom service, you can stay back for fellowship in a short while as I close in Jesus' name. Amen.